Hey there, it's Inga, and today I'm going to show you how to make these sweet and simple aster flowers. Now, these flowers make great fillers because you can put them together pretty quickly. Um, they do take up uh, a fair amount of space, but they're small enough so that they still keep the focus on some of the larger flowers that you might have in an arrangement. So asters grow in a variety of colors, usually shades of purples, pinks, sometimes white, and maybe a few other colors. But as paper artists, as you know, we can choose to make them in any color imaginable. Um, today I'm going to be working with this purple paper here, and I'll tell you a little bit about some other paper options that you might want to choose. So before we start making, let's just go over the materials and tools that you'll need for this project. So for the flower, I've got some German doublette here for the flower petals. Now this paper has been hand dyed, hand colored. Um, I show you exactly how to do this in one of my Patreon videos if you're a Patreon member. If you're not a member but you would like to join, I've got a link below where you can go right to my Patreon page and sign up. I, I love using German doublette for the petals in this flower. You don't have to though. Uh, you could also easily use um, Italian 180 gram or 140 gram crepe and I'll talk a little bit later in the video about how to modify the instructions to use this type of paper instead. You can choose to hand color your paper like I did here or feel free to use pre-colored doublette in any color of your choice. For the center I'm using this German heavy yellow crepe. This one is a Leah Griffith crepe and the color is pear. It's sort of a lemony yellow. I really love this shade for the ester centers, but you could use any yellow crepe paper that you like and pretty much any weight, although I would recommend something along the lines of the heavy or doublet as opposed to the extra fine or lightweight crepes for this. For the sepals, stem, and leaves, I'm using this German dark green doublet. I love this paper. I use it for so many things and it comes in really handy here for this ester project. You're gonna need two weights of stem wire. I'm using 22 gauge for the flower stems, for the individual stems. I'll show you what I mean for this part here. And then I'm using 18 gauge for this part here to give it just a little bit more of a sturdy stem. For shaping, I'm using a scriber tool here. This is one of my favorites. It's actually for uh, cookies and pastry decorating, but it works great for paper flowers. I've got a link below for this tool if you're interested in that. Um, we will be using a clip to hold on to our fringe as we cut it. I find that it's really, really helpful. It reduces hand fatigue. When you're doing a lot of fringing, sometimes just holding on to that paper can really tire your hand out a lot. And this way you can also cut through multiple layers of paper at the same time. I've got my Kai scissors for regular cutting, and then I'm also going to be using these Fiskars Spring Action Scissors. Again, um, if, if you're doing a lot of fringing, these can really help reduce fatigue in the hand that's holding the scissors. Also got a link to these scissors below if you're interested in those. I've got my favorite Aline's Turbo Tacky glue pen. I've got needle nose pliers and a wire snip, and I think that's all that we need here. So we're ready to go. Let's start with making the center of the flower. Alrighty, so I've cut my stem wire. I've got my 22 gauge and four and a half inch long pieces. I've got one for each flower. So if I'm gonna make a stem like this example here, I want three of my 22 gauge wires, and let's see what that is in centimeters. It is about 11 centimeters long. And I've got a seven inch piece, seven or eight inches would be good, of my 18 gauge wire. And that would be maybe 18 or 19 centimeters, something like that. Doesn't have to be exact on any of these pieces. This is just um, a good size that would work. And then I've got one of my center fringe pieces cut out. And I'll give you the measurements for this. Um, I do have a template available for Patreon members. If you want the full template, uh, sign up for my Patreon page. Um, otherwise, let's see here. Let's just measure it real quick. About five inches long and about uh, three quarter inches tall. And uh, or about 13 centimeters long by about two centimeters tall. 
All right, so this is for the center fringe. And I'm gonna go ahead and now that I've cut this, I'm gonna stretch the paper out. I'm gonna stretch it out all the way. We're gonna end up with a long piece just like this. Now that it is stretched out, I'm gonna go ahead and fold it up so that it's easier to fringe. So I've, I've folded it in half. I'm gonna fold it in half one more time here. And one more time. So I've got a little bundle of folded paper, just like this. I'm going to go ahead and clip it into my fringe clip. I'm gonna uh, cover about half of the paper with my clip. So I've got about half of that paper sticking out. I'm gonna make sure that it's nice and straight and I don't have any uh, pieces that are way out of alignment. So just double check it from both sides, see what it looks like. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I want it to be pretty close to being lined up. All right, now I'm ready to uh, start fringing. So first I'm going to find all of those folded edges and slice through them until I get up to the metal clip. And there might be another one here, yep. Sometimes it's hard to find them all when you've got the layers. This one's gonna be easy because it's just one slice through all of those folded layers. Just like that. So now this is where my spring handled scissors come in handy because I can just go ahead and start fringing and it's much easier on my hand if I'm just doing this. They just automatically spring open. For simple fringes like this, these work wonderfully. If you're trying to cut out more uh, complex shapes, these spring action scissors aren't the best because uh, you don't have as much control. But for straight little cuts, they work great. So I'm gonna go ahead and start fringing. I'm gonna make my fringes as tiny as I can. Just make them really small, really close next to each other. If you happen to accidentally cut through some fringe and it falls off, that's okay. Just keep going. I'm, I'm just cutting right up to that metal clip. Cutting through all these layers at once. I just find it much easier with uh, using the clip holding the layers together and with these spring action scissors. You don't have to use either of these tools to create this fringe. If you prefer uh, just holding the paper without the clip, using regular scissors, no problem at all. All right, we are almost done here. There we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and before I un, uh, unfold this, I'm gonna kind of bunch it up and roll it in between my fingers and kind of compress that fringe and sort of smash it and roll it. There we go. There's construction outside of uh, my home today, so I don't know if you can hear some like grinding and scraping, but they are they are putting speed bumps onto the street, which I'm actually really excited about because people drive way too fast on this street. <laughs> I'm sure not everyone's gonna be excited about it like I am, but oh well. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and unfold this. We're um, almost ready to wind it onto our stem here. I'm gonna take one of my 22 gauge wires. I'm gonna make a little hook. Uh, probably it's this, this length here is probably about a quarter of an inch or about six millimeters, but it's not super important to have a specific length here. Just make a hook, leave it open a little bit. I'm gonna get my paper strip ready here. I'm gonna put two lines of glue. I'm gonna put one that's right under the fringe. And 
and then I'm going to put another line of glue that's a little bit lower right along the bottom or maybe just some dots. It doesn't really necessarily need to be a full solid line of glue. You just want to be able to have a nice, uh, nice secure glue when it's all rolled together. All right, I'm going to take my stem wire here with a hook. I'm going to hook it in between a few of the fringes here near the end and fold that little edge of the paper over. Now I'm going to press the hook closed and I'm ready to roll this up. So I'm just going to hold that paper uh, firmly so I get a nice tight roll. I want to roll things all at one level. So I like to keep an eye at the bottom edge. Actually, that's the easiest way uh, for me to tell that I'm, I'm rolling it all at the same height. Make sure that bottom edge stays lined up as you go. Almost done here. I know this seems like a lot of paper, a lot of fringe. It's actually bigger right now than it's going to be in just a few minutes. All right, this is rolled up. I'm gonna squeeze this around the wire, squeeze this in between my thumb and fingers and just kind of go around and get it really securely glued together. All right, now we are ready to Give it some finishing touches. So you can see here that these centers are much smaller and tighter than what I've just made. We are going to cut this fringe to make this cute little rounded shape that you see here in the middle of these asters. Um, that fine fringe is gonna give it a great texture and by trimming the fringe, we can get a really, uh, a really specific shape and it's much easier to do it this way versus trying to wrap a bunch of tiny fringe uh, really precisely. So I'm going to cut about half of the height off of this fringe. I'm going to make some yellow confetti here. Now I've got this sort of compressed area of fringe I'm going to, now I want to taper or give it a sort of rounded dome shape. So I'm gonna start just cutting off these longer bits on the edge, sort of trimming those off a little bit. And you can see it still looks pretty messy. So if yours looks messy at this point, that's okay. We're just gonna keep going and gradually trim off the sides so that it creates sort of a rounded, rounded shape. So we're almost there. I'm just gonna kind of trim and rotate to get any stragglers any pieces that are kind of sticking up or off to the side. You can see one over here. Sometimes you'll get a rogue piece or two that has a mind of its own. You need to kind of get in there and trim it off. All right, that looks pretty good. So now we've got this sort of really tightly rounded fringe that looks like a sweet little center of an aster flower. There we go. All right, this one is ready to use now. So I'm gonna go ahead and start working on the petals. All right, so we're ready to start working on the petals. So I've got a piece of doublet here cut out according to my petal fringe template. And again, if you would like this template as a download um, that's available to my Patreon members. The link is below where you can join my Patreon page. 
if you are using uh, heavy Italian paper or other heavy crepe with a lot of this crepe texture, um, what I would want to do is cut a piece that is the right height here for the template. And I'll give you these measurements in just a moment. So I've got a piece that's the right height. I'm going to stretch it out. Stretch it out uh, probably about 50%. So there's a little bit of crepe texture left. It doesn't need to be completely stretched out, but you, you want to have a smoother texture than, um, than just straight off the roll. So then once you stretch it, then you trim it down to size. So that's how I would start if you're using this heavier style crepe with a lot of that the, the heavy crepe texture. You want to pre-stretch it. But for the doublet, you don't need to do any stretching at all. You're just going to cut it right from the piece of paper as it is. So the dimensions here. This piece is 5 inches wide and 1 inch tall. Or 13 centimeters wide and 2.5 centimeters tall. So for this one, I'm going to fold it in half and I'm going to clip it. This time I'm, I am just going to put about a quarter of an inch into the clip. I want most of that paper sticking outside of the clip. So about six millimeters or so inside the clip. I'm gonna take a look here and, and I am gonna just make sure that everything's lined up. It looks straight, it looks good. And I'm gonna grab my spring handle scissors again and slit the side with the fold. I'm gonna slit that all the way up to the middle. And now I'm gonna do some fringes that they're gonna be a little wider than what we did for the center. It's gonna be a, a, just a little less than an eighth of an inch or about two millimeters. And I'm just gonna go all the way up to the metal here and fringe all the way down my strip, making these small-ish cuts about two millimeters along the entire strip. Sometimes when you get to the end, it's kind of tricky to get that last cut. So sometimes I will just take it out and take a look at those two fringes here and decide if I need to cut one in half. I think I do. I'll just cut this one in half. And I think the other one next to it was fine. So we're good to go. Now, when you see an aster in nature, the petals are actually tapered at the end. Uh, sometimes they have sort of a rounded taper look to them. And if you wanted to really make this just like a real aster, you could go in and taper these. Um, but that, that is a lot of work. And sometimes you're in the mood for that, sometimes you're not. Um, so as a filler flower, I prefer to just leave them straight. Now you can use some shaped, um, some scallop shears. The smallest one that I've seen are three millimeters though, so you would end up with wider petals. So like I used in the lavender video that I published a couple weeks ago. You could, um, you could cut those edges with a three millimeter scallop before you fringe and then do a three millimeter fringe. So it would have a slightly different look. It would also be very pretty and it would give you those um, tapered or curved edges onto your petals. So I encourage you to experiment with that if you like. So even though I'm not going to taper these, I still want the ends to have a little bit of a shape. So they're not just these straight paper cuts sticking out of the center of my flower. So I'm gonna take this scriber tool and I'm going to curl 
the very tips of these uh, fringes, just the very end, give it a really distinct curve, just curling them downward. And you'll see when we um, glue this around the center, that, that downward curve really adds to the realism without worrying about needing to taper these petals. It's just another way of achieving a realistic look, but if you prefer that tapered look, I encourage you, um, again, I encourage you to give it a try. All right, so this is now ready to glue onto the center. And again, I'm gonna make two little stripes of glue. I'm gonna make one stripe right underneath the spot where my fringe cuts end. And I'm gonna make another one right along the bottom, maybe just some dots. That should be good enough. All right. I am doing this because I, I wanna make sure that the paper is really glued together right where those fringe cuts end. So I'm getting a really tight seal at, right at the um, center of my flower where the petals are coming out. And then I also want the bottom of the paper to be securely glued a little bit further down. All right, I'm just gonna do this to kind of pick it up. And now I'm gonna reposition it. I want that glue to be, that top glue line to be right under my little baby yellow fringe. And you'll, you'll probably see some of your yellow paper sticking out at the bottom, that's fine. I'm gonna go ahead and get this wrapped around. I wanna really, really pay attention to making sure that it's evenly wrapped all the way around. I'm gonna pull the paper just a little bit. I don't wanna stretch it really tight, but just enough so that I get a nice tight wrap. And pay attention as you go. Um, you don't want all of your petals stacked up right one right behind the other. So it's a little hard to tell with these tiny petals, but see if you can get them to stagger a little bit. Here I can tell, I can, I can see that there aren't any huge gaps, so my petals are staggering uh, to get, they're, they're staggering pretty nicely. If I am seeing really big gaps of air in between my petals, like here's a few spots where right here and right here, there's some air I can see it kind of through all these petal layers. I wanna try to get some petals lined up to kind of cover that. So I think that looks good. And you might have to you might have to stretch your paper a little extra in a few spots to achieve that. The first flower or so, you might be going pretty slow as you wrap. And as you get more practice, you'll be able to do this much faster. All right, here we go. We're at the end. I'm gonna squeeze this, get it all tacked together. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and sort of open these up. I can go ahead and really press down and get those really opened up so that they're almost flat. And I can see here there's a few gaps. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of encourage some of my petals to fill in those gaps. just by kind of shifting them over a little bit. Don't worry about making it perfect, but that's just one way that you can, you can adjust these if there's any big uh, space gaps in your aster. All right, now that this is open, if I want to, I can take my scriber tool and do another little round of curling And again, I'm just curling those very tips of the petals 
All right, this looks good. So I've got a little aster made. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get some sepals put on and uh, assemble my stem to make a little bunch just like this. All right, so we're ready to work on some sepals. So I've got a piece cut out with my sepal fringe template. And let's measure that. It is two and a half inches and one inch tall. So that's uh, about six centimeters, maybe a little extra, and 2.5 uh, centimeters tall. So I know that I'm gonna want three of these, so I'm just gonna stack three together and cut them all at once. Uh, you don't have to do that, but it might save you some time. And since I have my clip here, I'm gonna clip them all together. So I am clipping in about a third of this paper. So probably about um, 3 eighths inch or something like that. With about a centimeter clipped into the metal. And I'm gonna take just my regular scissors this time. I'm gonna make a series of wide fringes about a quarter of an inch or about six millimeters wide. Don't worry about getting them all exactly the same or measuring that uh, measuring them exactly. They just that's a, a good approximation for you. There we go. That's good enough. Now I'm going to taper each of these. They're going to come to a point, but it's going to kind of taper into a point. So, I'm just going to go ahead and sort of Start here, I like to go um, and cut each side, the same side of each fringe, and then flip it over and do it that way. So I'm, I'm starting in the midpoint of one of my fringe bits and making sort of a curved tapered edge. All right, so now that these are all tapered, I'm gonna flip it over do the same thing, but now I'm on the other side. So I'm gonna start at that midpoint and make a point here and just go ahead and taper the other edge and go on down my fringe strip and do that to each little segment. All right, there we go. Nice fringy fringes, tapered to a point. You might have some that look a little different from the others, that's totally cool. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take one of these and get this flower finished up. So I'm gonna go in with my fingertips and kind of stretch each fringe a little bit. I'll do a few and then, and then show you uh, what they look like. So you can see that they're a little bit wider now that I've stretched that kind of near the base of each little segment. And I'm just gonna keep going and go on down the line and do all these segments. And I guess, you know, if, if you really don't like doing this part, it would be optional, not a big deal. So I want to curl the ends too. So I'm deciding that I would like this green to be the outer surface. I'm gonna curl the tips of my sepals toward me. Whatever green you want facing out, hold it so that it's facing you while you do this. All right, now that these are all curled, I'm gonna flip it over. This is the inner surface where I'm gonna put that glue. And I'm gonna get a couple of glue stripes, just like my other pieces. Some near the top of that fringe, the other right at the bottom. I'm going to line this up pretty close to the bottom of this yellow paper here. This is where I'm gonna start. So it can, it can be even with the bottom. In this case, it's coming a little bit lower. It doesn't really matter, but you, you want it to be pretty close to the bottom edge of this 
yellow paper. I'm gonna wrap the bottom of my flower. It's gonna push those petals up again. That's okay, it's just temporary. So once I get all the way around once, I'm gonna shift it to go down a little bit lower. And I wanna make sure that my next sepal is kind of in between this first layer. So keep on an eye on that as you go around that your sepals are staggering their position a little bit. And here I am at the end again, and I just have a couple more sepals. I'm just gonna get those on. And you can see now that the bottom of my paper is below all of my um, yellow paper from the center. So I'm just gonna sort of pinch the bottom here and roll it in between my fingers and maybe kind of pinch around the base of the flower a little bit too, just to make sure everything's all glued down. I can go ahead and reopen the flower. And there we go. Now the last step for the individual flower stem, I'm going to wrap the stem with a little strip of green doublet. All right, so I'm going to I'm going to put the glue on this side here. I'm going to start wrapping covering the edge of my sepal paper. Pull it tight and wrap downward. I'm gonna wrap most of this wire. I probably don't need to go all the way to the end. Um, I can, if I wanna add a second layer of paper here, I can start doing that. That's up to you, totally optional. A second layer will just make it a little bit thicker. All right, so I've just added a little extra paper there to thicken the stem. So this one's ready to go. I'm gonna make two more just like this and then join them all together onto one main stem. All right, so we're almost done here. I've got three little flowers ready to go. I've got my 18 gauge wire, some strips of my green crepe, and I'm going to assemble these onto one single stem. So I'm just gonna start by taking one of these flowers and my 18 gauge wire and kind of overlapping that a little bit. I'm gonna wrap some glued paper strip around both of these wires and get them tightly wrapped together. Make sure that paper is really getting stretched nice and tightly on there. And then I'm gonna just wrap down this 18 gauge wire a little bit. So you can see here that I have a thicker part where they overlap. I am, I'm gonna add just a little bit of paper up here just so it's not so abrupt, but I'm gonna be adding the other flower stems a little bit lower. So it's gonna add some thickness to this area um, in just a moment. So I'll just take another paper strip I'm just gonna add a little bit of this paper above that joint area. Tear it off. All right, that looks a little bit smoother. I'm going to, I just need a little extra dot of glue here. I'm gonna choose my next flower stem and stagger it maybe just a little bit lower. Something like this. So the tops aren't uh, totally on the same level. I like them to have some slightly different heights. We'll get these wrapped up together. I'm gonna, gonna wrap down a little bit further and then kind of on the other side of the stem here, I can add my next flower, just a little bit lower, just like that.
Get them all wrapped up together. I'm going to take another strip of my green paper and wrap this section here just to thicken it, thicken it up a little bit so it's closer to this thickness right here. I'm going to start right here underneath this really thick part. Now, if your stems are going to all be in a bouquet or arrangement, you don't necessarily have to worry about making that thickness um, the same all the way down. If you are making a piece that is going to be featuring a lot of details and the stem's gonna be showing, you might consider making the entire stem the same thickness as this thickest point right here. So just consider that as you're working. All right, now um, I'm gonna add just a couple of leaves. These are super simple leaves, and then we're, we're gonna be done with this beautiful aster stem. So I've got two leaf shape sizes, and these are just sort of elongated uh, leaf shapes, really simple with the grain running vertically. They're not gonna be wired or anything. I'll just give you the heights of these in case you want that. So the tall one is about an inch and a half, and that's about uh, four centimeters. The small one is about an inch and an eighth, or about uh, three centimeters. And if you do want the template that's available to my Patreon members, the link is below to uh, join my Patreon membership. All right, so cut out as many leaves as you like um, here I just have one large and one small. Um, I am going to cup the leaf just a little bit to give it a little shape. So this is the side that I'm going to be gluing toward the stem. I'm going to cup that a little bit at the widest part, and I'm going to curl the very tip of the leaf backward a little bit. And here's one that I shaped earlier. And I'm just going to do the same thing with this small leaf. Just a tiny bit of shaping. And now they are ready to glue on. I tend to take the larger leaves and put them a little lower on the stem. Like maybe around these areas where the uh, flower stems are coming together. I'm just kind of pinching that on so it wraps around the stem a little bit. I'm going to put one on the other side near this flower stem. That'll look good. Kind of get that off the stem just a little bit so it gives it some nice texture. And then with this small one I'm just going to pick one of my flower stems and stick that on. Maybe I'll put that over here. Just kind of glue that on get the tip curling away from the stem. And now I can go ahead and shape my individual flower stems any way that I like. And of course, adjust them once they are in my bouquet or arrangement. All right, my aster stem is complete. Let me grab the other one here and I've got a whole bunch of asters. Such a classic late summer flower would look so gorgeous in a summer bouquet or just a whole bunch of these in a little bud vase would be really pretty. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you try creating some asters of your own. This project is fun. There is a lot of fringing. Hopefully with some of those tools and tips that I gave you uh, will be a little bit easier for you. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe and make sure to check out the links below. I've got uh, links to resources as well as to my Patreon page, tutorial club membership. I've got monthly tutorials in uh, great detail, uh, complete with templates and plenty of advanced techniques for you to enjoy. So I hope you have a wonderful day and I hope to see you again soon. Thanks so much for watching.